So the game I'm playing today is called Race Room Racing Experience, or just simply Race Room. Now, there are three reasons why I wanted to play this game. One, it's a racing game, and you guys know me, I am a pretty big fan of racing games. If you have been watching my videos for a long time, you'll know that I have played a lot of racing games on this channel. And uh, two, this is a free-to-play game, so I figured, why not play it? I mean, I do enjoy playing uh, free-to-play games on Steam every now and then. But the third reason, and this is actually the biggest reason why I wanted to play this game, this game does not seem to have very good reviews. Yeah, this is another Steam game that doesn't have very good reviewers. According to the Steam page for this game, only 53% out of around 4,000 user reviews for this game are positive. And to be honest, I don't really see that many poorly reviewed racing games on Steam nowadays. Not, not me anyway, but... I don't know, there probably are a lot of bad racing games on Steam, but... This one was kind of interesting because it kind of confused me because the game didn't really look half bad. So I wanted to see why people didn't really like the game. Like, uh, only 53%, so a lot of people seem to either like or dislike this game. And I have played the game a little bit off-screen already, and to be honest, I can kind of see why a lot of people don't like this game. Because, as with a lot of these free-to-play games, this game is filled to the brim with microtransactions. Like, it is unbelievable. And, uh... The prices for the DLC packs for this game are also unbelievable as well. Um, these are actually the DLC packs right here. You see that ADAC GT Masters, uh, DTM Experience 2013 and 2014? Those are the DLC packs for this game. And the DTM Experience 2014 pack costs $37, which is just absolutely insane for DLC. So... Yeah, there's a lot of really crazy microtransactions in this game, and I think that's one of the reasons why a lot of people don't like this game. But the game itself is not really that bad. I mean, uh, <laughs> I'm not good at it. I, I usually suck at these uh, racing games. But uh, I'm going to play it here anyway, to uh, just to show you guys what the game is like. So we have single race, championship, leaderboard challenge, uh, we're not gonna do all of that. We're just gonna go to single race. But, uh, yeah, got this, uh, overcomplicated menu right here. Also, if you notice, the menu is kind of glitching out. Um, not really sure what's causing that. I'm not sure if that's, uh, a problem with, uh, me playing this game on Windows 8. I mean, I have played some games, like Facade and Motocross Madness 2, which do have problems running on Windows 8, so I'm not sure if uh, this is a side effect of playing the game on Windows 8. But, uh, you have a whole bunch of different menus here. And uh, also, the main menus do not have any music whatsoever. Like, there's no music playing at all. I do not have the game muted right now. There's just no music that plays on these menus, and there's not even any sound effects for when you choose stuff either. Like, I'm clicking on stuff right here, and there's no sound effects. All you hear is me clicking on my mouse. So, yeah, apparently the developers were too lazy to add music and sound effects, apparently. But, uh, the game itself, like the in-game races, they do have sound effects, but, uh, not music. This game pretty much has no music. Uh, so you have two different tracks right here. So as you can see, you have a whole bunch of tracks. However, you need to purchase them. So you have like a Bathurst Circuit, for instance. And uh, this costs $6.12 to purchase. However, you also have what's called VRP. I'm not really sure what that is, though. But I guess you could also purchase it with VRP as well. I have no clue what it is, though. But, uh, yeah, you purchase it for 612 US dollars. I don't really know how much that would be in Canadian dollars. But maybe it's around 7, probably. And then you have, uh, Brands Hatch. And it's weird because all of these tracks cost different amounts of money. Like this one costs 557. And then Zenvort, right here, costs 446. So, yeah, you have to purchase all of these 
tracks with real money. Or you could use VRP, which I guess is like the in-game currency or something. I'm not really sure how how uh, that works, though. Like, I'm not sure how you uh, how you're supposed to collect VRP. But uh, you only have two different circuits. You have Portimao Circuit and Race Room Raceway. So I think I'll go to Race Room Raceway here. You have five different layouts: Grand Prix, Bridge, Classic, National, Classic Sprint. Yeah, it's it's overcomplicated, like I said. Practice is going to be off. Yeah, I'm just going to turn that off. So this is the car I'm going to be using in this race. at Celine S7R Vitaphone Racing Team or whatever. There's also a bunch of different cars you can choose from. The ones that are in purple right here are, of course, cars that you have to purchase. Actually, how many do these cost? Three thirty-four. I guess that's not a lot. I guess that is that is basically what uh, usual DLC costs. DLC usually costs like less than ten dollars. I don't know why they would they would make uh, everything else so expensive though. WTCC. How much does this cost? Three twelve. Even it's even less expensive. Two seventy nine VRP. Anyway, let's uh, just exit out of this. We're gonna go to race room raceway. We're just gonna start racing right now. You can also change the time of day and whatnot, and it actually has to connect with the game. So I guess the entire game is internet based or something. So I guess if you don't have an internet connection, you can't play the game. Well, then again, you pretty much can't, because the thing is, you need to create an account in order to play this game. You can't actually use your Steam account to play this. So, even though the game is on Steam, which, as I mentioned in uh, the, the uh, videos I uploaded of Moonbreakers, which was like a very long time ago, uh, I don't understand why in all these free-to-play games you have to create an account on the uh, service that the game uses in order to play it. It never made any sense to me. Speaking of Moonbreakers, I should really make a video of that game again because it's been a long time since I played Moonbreakers. I wonder if anyone even still plays that game. Moonbreakers is another free-to-play game on Steam, but uh, I really should make another video of that game. One, I really would like to know if people are still playing that because I have no idea. Anyway, let's just begin this race here. Uh, can set up my car. Let, let's just go right to the race. Okay, it's not going to let us, but yeah, you can see the starting lineup. There's there's all the cars that are going to be participating in this race. Woohoo, there's my car. Let's just go to the race, please. Okay, here we are. This race is underway. We're just going to race for eight minutes here. I'll probably only be doing one race because, to be honest, I don't... Ha okay, then. Nice 360. Look at that. Recovered flawlessly. That was good. Hey, hey, this guy's trying to pit maneuver me. I'll probably only be doing one race here, because I don't feel like playing this game for too long. Not to mention, I don't have a lot of time to be recording anyway, so... This will probably be the only race that I do in this video. And this is also the uh, only video I'm going to make of this game as well, because I just wanted to show this game off to you guys. I mean, the, the game itself is not bad, but I really don't like the fact that there's so many microtransactions in this game. It's unbelievable. And the fact that that uh, the DLC packs for this game are so expensive. Like, it's just, it's unbelievable. In fact, if you purchase, there's, there's four DLC packs for this game. And if you purchase all four DLC packs, it'll cost you a total of $100. I'm not kidding. A hundred dollars for DLC. It's 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 unbelievable. I I can see why some people don't like this game, and I am just I am just really bad at this. Sorry, but uh Like I said, I'm I'm not good at racing games anyway. I mean I said that I am a pretty big fan of racing games, but that doesn't mean I'm good at them. I'm definitely not good at this. Okay. I didn't even attempt to break there. Wow. This is, this is good. I, I, I am so good at racing, guys. I can't even control this car anymore. Anyway, you have, uh, different camera angles as well. Uh, I don't remember how to change that. Actually, yeah, I do remember how to change them. What am I talking about? Okay, yeah, you can have this, like, uh, this free camera view right here. Or, or like a TV camera almost, I guess. But this is just really hard. 
it's really hard to race in uh, in this view because I can't I can barely see what I'm doing. Look at this. There I come around the corner. Then I think I can go back into the cockpit, but uh, not really sure what the button for that is actually. But yeah, th 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 these are just like the TV cameras. I guess it's not that difficult to control your car in this view, but. And again, you can't really see, you still can't really see what the heck you're doing in this view, so I wouldn't recommend it. I would only recommend it for looking in, like, the instant replay. Okay, I braked way too late there. Alright, well, this is, this is going good right now. I guess I could use this camera while I'm on the, the straightaways. Here I come! View! It's funny how there's, like, no speedometer. It just tells me, uh, which gear I'm in. It's really strange. Not sure if there's any way to enable it. Or if it's even in the game. I, I really don't know. I don't know, this, this is, uh... This, this racing game in particular doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. But... I'm still gonna try to play this here anyway. Also, the graphics just look, just look so stunning. Yeah, this, this game doesn't really have the best graphics in the world. It's really weird because apparently this game re requires at least 4 gigabytes of RAM in order to run properly. And the recommended amount is 8 gigabytes. Yeah, and then you look at these graphics and, and you think, how the heck does this game use up to 8 gigabytes of RAM on your computer? I mean, it still wouldn't be a problem, because my laptop has twice that amount of RAM, but still. Just that I don't expect a game with these kinds of graphics to use up to 8 gigabytes of RAM on my laptop. Anyway. This, uh, session is half over here. Just gotta race a little bit more, and then we'll be... we'll be done with this. How, how far ahead is, is everyone, anyway? They like, uh, I think they're like 11 seconds ahead. Yeah, I think that I think that's what that says. Yeah, you can toggle this thing by pressing eight. You can also toggle the race line on and off by pressing uh, the four key on your keyboard. But I don't see a race line anywhere, so I don't know what the heck they're talking about. I don't see a race line, do you? I don't see it anywhere, and it is on. So, I, I have no clue what they're talking about. Maybe there is no race line for this track. Maybe the, maybe the Portimao circuit has, has one, but not this one. I don't know. This, this racing game doesn't make a whole lot of sense. But, uh, like I said, it, the core game is not really that bad. But, uh... I, I still think there's uh, a lot of racing games that are a lot better than this. This is not the best racing game ever made. That's for sure. What the heck was that noise? Okay. Oh, that's some good... This, okay, that was, that was some decent braking right there. Oh my god, what is going on with this camera? Switch to another camera. Let's see if I can try making that turn with this camera right here. Oh, there we go. Oh, that was good, actually. That, that was fairly decent. Okay, I can't see what I'm doing. There's the guy in, in the car, though. He looks, he looks, uh... He looks really, uh... Confident with himself. Wow. <laughs> yep, this is... This is a good performance right here. Okay, let's just get out of this camera angle, because this camera is messing me up. Okay, then. Just a minute and 30 seconds. This is almost over. This nightmare is almost over. I changed to this camera. Because we're going on the straightaway. Ooh. Okay. Should probably break right about now, perhaps. I might. I may have braked a little too early there, but... And then again, it's also, it's also difficult to play these kinds of racing games with a keyboard, so... It's, uh really difficult. And I think I mentioned in one of my older videos that I did have uh, a steering wheel. Yeah, actually, one of my race injection videos that I had an old uh, steering wheel 
like, uh, I don't remember if it was a Logitech steering wheel or not, but basically it was a steering wheel that I could plug into my computer, and I could use that to control the car in certain racing games. Like, uh, there was one racing game that I remember playing a long time ago called Sports Car GT, and I used to use the, uh, USB steering wheel for that game so I could control the car with the steering wheel. And there was also, like, uh, gas pedals and brake pedals that I could plug into, uh, my computer as well. And I could use that to, like, accelerate and brake. So, it was pretty cool. I think I still have all of that stuff as well. Um, I'm not sure if I still have Sports Car GT, though. Sports Car GT is a game I've wanted to play on my channel for quite some time now, but... I can't find the game disc for the game at the moment, so... But once I, uh... Once I find it again, then I'll probably make a video of it. Sports Car GT was one of my... One of my favorite racing games. That I, uh... That I played as a kid. Anyway, I guess... I guess this is the final lap. This still hasn't ended yet. And this probably will never end, because I, I can't even... <laughs> can barely even complete this track. And this, this car slides all over the place as well. Alright, so I just need to complete one more lap then, I guess. Alright. Let's do it then. Okay, this is... This is good right here. This is a good performance. How... Why, why the heck did you guys let me participate in this race? Like, you, you, mu you must have known that by allowing me to participate in this race that I was just going, going to absolutely suck at it. They would, they would never allow me to participate in, in, like, real life races. No, my, my driving skills are just, are just subpar. This is unbelievable. Alright, go through the bridge. I think we, we're almost back at the, at the start finish. Oh my god. This is, I'm so bad at this. Alright, is that it? Is that it? Is the race done? Are we done here? Yay, we're done here. Save a replay. Save replay. That was, that was so bad at it. Need to remind myself of how bad I am at this game. Anyway, guys, I'm gonna end things here. So, that was Race Room. The game itself is still pretty fun, although it's really difficult to play with a keyboard, so... If you do have, like, a... Like a Logitech steering wheel or something like that, I would recommend using that to play this game, because this game is pretty much impossible to play with a keyboard. But the game itself is not bad. I really do not like the fact that this game has so many microtransactions. And also the fact that the DLC for this game is very expensive. Like $37? Like I could I could purchase a, a brand new video game with that amount of money. Goodness gracious. But if you want to try it out, link's in the description. It's free to play, so try it out if you want. It's not like uh, you'll be spending any money just... Uh, downloading the game, so it's it's fine if you want to try the game out, but game itself is still fun. I just don't like the fact that there's so many microtransactions and how expensive the DLC for this game is. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next video I make. Later.